Hi guys, my name is Seb Tudor, I'm the Man of the Silver Mountain and welcome back. Today I want to talk about um, something that happened to me uh, during the time that I was training as a manager, during the time that I was getting my management qualifications and things like that. And um, it, it's, it's a little bit of fun, for me at least. Um, and uh, we were asked one day as a group, me and the other, other delegates on, on my course, um, to come up with some values for for what an ideal leader is, and so I wanted to give you mine because uh, you know after I'd been in management and doing um, you know, kind of leading teams and doing those things for um, the best part of my adult life up until uh, about a year and a half ago, um, you know it was it was something that I felt I I had a fairly good grasp of. And something that I uh, I'd like to share with you guys. Um, so ultimately, there are five things that I came up with that needed to be um, inherent in a good leader. And these can be learned. These can be uh, developed in various ways. They're not natural necessarily by any means, but they are um, important. Um, the first one I think is obvious to anyone that that's been in a leadership role of any sort. Uh, is communication. You need to be able to talk to the people around you, get the, the information across to uh, to the people working under you to ensure that they do the jobs that they need to do, uh, to ensure that they know what you're doing. Um, and uh, and so that one's a bit of a non-brainer. Uh, no -brainer. That one's kind of um, mentioned and, and continually brought up numerous times wherever you look for, for leadership um, information. And so the communication side of things, though, is is you know, what what do people mean by that? Yeah, you need to be able to talk and be talked to, and so on and so forth. But what does that mean? Well, it means that you need to be concise enough to get all of the information across easily and in a in a, a packet that people can understand and grasp. But it also means that you need to be thorough enough to make sure that people know how to do their job, what they need to do, and so on. It can be difficult, and communication can be a hard thing, especially when you when you're looking at, at roles that involve an awful lot of delegation, whereby you're also having to put a lot of trust in people to to take on what you're saying and get it done. But communication is very much the core of of uh, leadership, because without any kind of communication, you're not being able to to lead a team, and you're basically turning yourself into a team of one. You're isolating yourself. The, the second one that sprung to mind was decisive, and I realised that this is probably one of the hardest ones for people, um, because you know there are lots of people nowadays that, that get paralysed by the amount of information, by the amount of choice um, that there is in the world, and so I mean, you know, I like to be quite decisive on things. I will pick something and I will move towards it, but at the same time. If it's something that I don't care about, then there's a good chance I'll just sit there and go, well, what do you guys want? My girlfriend, who is not particularly decisive, and myself, when I don't care about something, some of the discussions in regards to, I don't know, what do you want to eat? What do you want to do tonight? What movie should we watch? Things like that. They last a long time, and they don't always end well. But it's something that, that happens. And so when you're working with a team... I mean, the largest team that I worked with was about 120 people um, at one time. Being decisive, finding out what you need to do, and then moving towards it as a very obvious goal that you have set for not only yourself but your entire team, that's important. And you need to ensure that there's a that it is a very specific goal. As I've said in other videos in regards to coaching, having that specific goal is important because if you don't have a specific goal then you may as well be shooting into a completely empty field instead of at a target. Um, but being decisive also means that you're not going to be leaving your team waiting, they're not going to be um, hanging on hoping for something to do or hoping for an idea to pop up of what they need to be doing. It's as soon as a new challenge comes along you decide how you're going to deal with it and then you can pass that on through communication, the first thing that we mentioned. But what happens when something goes wrong? Because obviously if you've been decisive and you've you've um, maybe made a decision without all of the relevant information, then what happens when you go wrong? Um, 
and that's where the next two of these points come in. The first one is a, is resilient because if you just crumble under pressure, if as soon as something goes wrong you just give up, then you're not going to get anywhere. And I resilience is a really big thing for me on numerous uh, numerous points because if I hadn't been as resilient as I am, then I personally would have suffered in a lot more ways than I actually did. But also, it's whenever I see people who aren't resilient. Um, trying things and then giving up very early on when they had so much promise or when they had um, so much uh, potential, so much to offer, uh, when they were doing such a good job but just because they thought it wasn't going well they gave up. Um, those things, you know, it, it sucks to see that. It's one of the reasons why I became a coach, it's one of the reasons why I'm making these videos. Seeing people just give up is not a good thing, it's not a thing that I, I enjoy seeing. And so having some resilience to you, making sure that you understand there's not the end of the world as soon as something goes wrong, that's important for a leader more so than anyone else because if you're a leader and you're being resilient then that means that the rest of your team who may very well be more inclined to give up than you are because they have less understanding, less agency in the matter or whatever else, if they see that the, the thing that went wrong didn't affect you in the slightest and you're just going to make uh, continue to move forward and continue to do things, then they're going to follow with you. You know, you're not going to have the the issues of, um, of sweating the small stuff, and as a result, having the rest of your team fall to pieces. You know, don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the big stuff. Just smile at it and keep going. Um, how do you keep going though? And that's how we. And that's that's the the fourth point that I've got for you adaptability you need to be adaptable you need to be able to change the way that you think the way that you work the way that you act you need to be able to try and and move yourself around to position yourself in such a way as to continue if you come up against an obstacle that obstacle is not a roadblock it's just a challenge it's not something that locks you away from your objective for eternity and it's not something that that you're going to have to 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 um kind of walk away from it's something that you can you can overcome it's just a challenge whether it it's if it's a wall that we're talking about whether you go through it with a chisel whether you dig under it with, with your, your bare hands or whether you find a way to jump over the top of it each one of those things is just as viable a solution but each one of those things requires a slightly different mindset a slightly different way of adapting and a slightly different set of tools and skills to get through it and as a result being adaptable is core because also if again you are leading. If people see that you've not only taken the brunt of the bad stuff and shrugged it off, and then you're still moving forward, you're still changing, changing the plan just enough to uh, to get by without changing the overall objective. People are going to start trying to think for themselves as well. They're going to look for ways to adapt themselves to your plan. It's going to work. People are going to want to work with you on that because they see you not slowing down, they see you not getting fussed, and they see you just continuing. And that's what we want because the last one is that you have to lead by example. If you're not willing to do the job that someone else, that you're telling someone else to do, then quite frankly, you're you're not doing a great job because it shows that you're not as resilient or that you're not as as capable or as adaptable to the role as someone else's. If, if uh, there was a, an instance when I was working uh, for um, in my first job when I first got into management and I was working in a cinema chain and it was a case of the, the boss that we had there at the time would very rarely go around and, and help out regardless of how busy it got. He would very rarely leave his office he, apart from to come and harass people. And so, and when I say harass, I mean try and chase people up to do the jobs that they were already doing. Um, but, you know, either way. And um, in that situation, um, you know, he was not leading by example. He was not stepping up and, and doing the things that needed to be done. More often than not, he just got in the way. And uh, whilst if you wanted to lead a shift effectively, you needed to be part of the team, even if you were directing it, you were still part of that team. Mm, excuse me, you needed to be changing bins, cleaning up, sorting people out, making sure that things were done on time. You needed to be as much of a monitor of that and as much a part of that as everyone else that you, you were working with. 
And there was no two ways about that. And it's the same for everything. If you live and lead by example, then you are going to have people follow you. You are going to have people take your example and try and action it. They're going to try and, and copy you because they want what you have. And I'm not even necessarily talking in regards to um, just work. I'm talking in regards to any situation where you're in a, a position of authority or a position of power, a position of, of leadership, um, be you a parent, a teacher, a, someone that's running an a extracurricular activity of some description, um, you just as a group of friends where you seem to have a bit more information than everyone else in regards to what you're doing. Lead by example, live the example, and, uh, and make sure that that example includes the other four things that we've talked about because that way you are going to really do well. And there are some other examples that I'd like to go into in another video at some point, but those are my five things that are most uh, important to, to being a leader, my five leadership values. Uh, just in closing, there are some other values that people often bring up, things like honesty, things like a positive attitude, and so on and so forth. I don't. I personally, in my experience, don't necessarily believe that those things are as important. You honesty, yeah, it's nice. It's something that you should be as a decent human being. I feel, but at the same time, it's not one of those things that that really, uh, you know, if you're a convincing liar and you keep track of your lies and you're not in any way honest. I've seen managers that do that very well and have still managed to lead their team very effectively to success. Um, it's not something that I would in any way recommend, but I'm not, you know, there there are good managers out there who are not honest people. Um, there are more bad managers out there that are not honest people, but the honesty thing isn't as much of a big deal. Positive, a positive attitude, eh, if you smile, that helps, I guess, because it puts people in a better mood. But I was a massive nihilist through most of the time that I was managing. I still am to a greater degree. And that doesn't also necessarily always lend to uh, a great positive attitude, regardless of how optimistic you may be. Um, and as a result, does it really... Uh, does it really matter being positive? No, because if you're if shared experience is more important, again, leading by example is more important. If you are in the same boat as all of the people that you are dealing with and you are all in a shit situation, then you can all find solace in one another to continue to deal with that situation, regardless of how bad it is and regardless of how miserable you are all are. You know, camaraderie and and uh, to an extent bravado amongst the team that can be very much helped by someone leading by example of one description or another doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be overly positive just to achieve a goal. Um, a delegation is another thing that's brought up and personally I see that as being a form of communication. It's just you, uh, I don't know why that people always separate the two out because if you're communicating effectively in a leadership role then you're going to be delegating because you can't always be in more than one place at once and I'll admit I was bad at this for quite some time because I was usually it was usually a case that I was more capable of just getting the job done I wanted the job done now and so I went and did it um, and I was still able to to one degree or another complete all of the tasks that were out in front of me and give my team a good good run um, as well but obviously the higher up I got the more responsibility as I was given delegation became more of a thing and it became something that I actually quite enjoyed doing because it allowed me to see people excel within the jobs that I'd given them and uh, that again lent to where I am now because it was something that I was able to see people becoming empowered as a result of me providing them with things to do and uh, and helping them find the route to uh, to solutions but anyway the question that I would like to pose to you guys is what examples have you had of bad leaders, bad managers, bad bosses? Um, tell me all about it in the description. No, not the description, the comments. I keep doing that, God damn it. Tell me, uh, give me an example of a bad manager that you've had down in the, the comments. And uh, yeah, if you found this interesting, if you found it useful, um, I know that there are a lot of people who um, have, have ended up, unfortunately, having to go into things like retail and had to... Um, leave behind a lot of the things that they'd hoped for purely because of the, the economic situation on the planet at the moment and the country 
um, you know, if, if this was useful to you in your career, then, you know, give me a give me a comment on that as well and drop me a like. Yeah, but for more videos, please subscribe and uh, take care, guys.